Jessica Spencer, very excited to be interviewing you today in Empower Network TV. Welcome here. Thank you so much for having me, Amos. It's great to be here. Okay, so for those of you, I'm just going to preface this, who are curious about chat, GPT, and AI, uh, Jessica just told me that she teaches that and that she uh, promoted a course online and had 1,800 teachers across the globe sign up for it to learn how to use it. So let's just, can we just start there and then we'll go back into your story? Can you yeah, give us absolutely. that. Let's just talk about what the heck happened there. So what'd you do? How'd you do it? Why'd you do it? <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so I've been studying AI for like the past six years. I find it really fascinating. I know a lot of folks are kind of scared about it right now, but I, I feel like there's a lot that can be done in just empowering folks with the knowledge and, you know, what it's capable of, what it can do, what it can't do, you know, where the pitfalls are. Um, and I, I think the neat thing is the more that we're empowered with that knowledge, the more that we can drive the future of this, which, which is exciting. Um, so I feel like we're at a point right now where we have a lot of power as individuals. So anyways, this, um, this course in particular, I've always been really passionate about education. Um, my husband, he's actually a sixth grade English teacher. And so, um, you know, I started playing around with ChatGPT back in December. Um, and then we started kind of, you know, trying out different use cases with it, like lesson planning and trying out, um, you know, creating, um, I don't know, like different quizzes and you can create like paragraphs that you can use in your classroom and st stuff like that. And so, there's just all of these different ways where it creates a lot of efficiencies within the educational processes. And um, even with, you know, creating, if you're stuck on a response to a parent or something like that, um, you know, you can kind of give it the context of the situation and then it helps you really brainstorm like what's a really positive response, which is awesome because I mean, as a teacher, there's so many moments of just like, you know, there's chaos going on. It's it's hard to focus sometimes. And I, I think it's almost like you have like an assistant that's right there next to you that you can kind of bounce ideas off of, which is awesome. So anyways, um, I, some of the teachers at his school were kind of curious about it, what it could do. And so um, I started recording some modules and ended up with like a whole class and um put it out there to a Facebook group on a whim that was like chat GPT for teachers and within one weekend had about 1800 signups from all over the world so um I've never had anything quite like that happen before and um this is my first experience doing like an on-demand class so it, it was it was exciting to see the possibilities um so I don't know that it was it was very eye-opening and I, I think Another thing that was really cool is just making sure you're very targeted with who your audience is was, was something that really jumped out at me because, you know, it's teaching about a specific subject um, for a specific outcome to a specific group. Um, and I think I kind of lucked into it in a lot of ways, but um, I think it definitely gave me some ideas for, you know, the overall strategy going forward for, for other things later on. So. Let me talk about that because there's a lot of ears that are going to hear this and perk up. So you lucked into it, fine, whatever we're going to call that. But the fact is you did it and had 1,800 signups for a course you ran. And obviously you had a paid thing you offered on the back end of that, I'm assuming. So that is where I messed up. <laughs> I offered it as a free beta and I think it just got away from me. And so lesson learned um definitely make sure that you know if you're doing something like this i think free betas are great but having the follow-up in place right afterwards i think is really good and i'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that follow-up looks like right now but um you have their yeah. emails do you have their emails i do yes okay, which is you, huge so you may, you may have messed up messed up that's all relative but <laughs> you can learn from this but you've you've not lost it so what you could do is and there'll be people that maybe reach out to you who are better than I am at this. But for example, reach out, hey, you know what? I want to thank you, Johnny and Jill, for attending my free beta on chat GBT. I'm so excited. Uh, number one, that you attended. I also collect testimonials. I would love, you know, if you're going to incentivize testimonials, let's just throw some couple things here. Uh, I want to give you, because you did this, I'm going to give you a discount on what I'm launching next. And so what you do is you could offer a discount for people that send in a testimonial. 
So you could get one level discount for your next paid thing for people that attended. And then you could give another level discount if they send you a video testimonial, selfie shot, 20 seconds. You could use that in a sales funnel to drive traffic to. We could talk about this. I'm just saying you've not lost anything. The fact that you had 1,800 That's signups smart. by accident, by accident. <laughs> Oops. You've not lost yeah. anything. Yes, you could have had, but reach out to me or there's people that can reach out to you and show you how to do all this. But anyway, can we talk a bit more about what you actually did? Because there's a bunch of people that want to do what you did. So how did you accidentally have 1800 signups? Can you give us a bit more granularly of what specifically you did? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, the, the course itself, I did it on Podia. And um, I think that's the first thing is, you know, the the more friction that you can remove from the sign up process, the better. And I, I know the kind of flows to sign up and everything and that one um, felt very easy and I didn't have like any questions about it or anything, which to me makes it feel like the user experience with going through the sign up process was pretty seamless. Um, so that was positive. And then I found a group with about, had about like over 300,000 educators in it. Um, on Facebook. And um, I tried to engage some in that before like posting anything just to provide value, not feel like I'm just like spamming people because <laughs> that's always awkward. So, um, and I, I wasn't sure if it was going to go through or not um, just because they don't want you like doing self-promotion, that type of thing. I tried to reach out to one of the admins and, and didn't hear back. Um, so I, I ended up just putting out a post and was, I, I think it said something about, um, you know, I, I have a class that I'm offering as a free beta. I love your feedback on it. Um, just trying to be like really positive and focus on the benefits they would receive with it, which, you know, by learning how to use this technology, you're learning how to save time, you can cut hours back on lesson planning, you can generate additional ideas that are going to better serve your students, you know, so really focusing on those like longer term outcomes um, is, is something I try to do some of the messaging and then um, had a had a link to the offer and um, I think it got shared like almost 30 times to different Facebook groups, so I, I don't I don't think all of them came from that same group. Um, I have no clue where all of them came from, but um, it was it was really neat because it was folks all over the world that um, ended up signing up, with, which was really exciting. And um, one thing that I did do that was really helpful is I I ended up building in as like the last um, lesson in there as I embedded a Google quiz. Um, to submit like testimonials and feedback and that type of stuff. And um, ended up getting some great testimonials that way where I didn't have to do any outreach after the fact. It was just part of the flow with the course. Um, so I, I think that was helpful. Oh, great job. I didn't know you got testimonials. Okay, killer. So okay, I'm curious, <laughs> what are you going to do with the next? Because what's next? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So um, I think, you know, now I have 2000 people that have, well, 1800 that have a really good, you know, um, basic understanding of how to leverage it in their classroom. And I, I think now it's kind of taking that knowledge to the next level. So what is that next stepping stone on their pathway? So I, I think you know, there, there's several directions I could go. I could go in the direction of, you know, really honing in on very specific subject areas and use cases around those, like one for ELA teachers, one for science, you know. So I think that's one route, but I think probably the, the best route is, um, you know, really trying to help them extend the functionality of it because there, there's this one thing called chat GPT plugins and what you can do with that is you can, you know, link it up to YouTube videos and it can run transcripts for you. You can ask it questions, that type of stuff. Um, same thing with websites, same thing with documents. So I think that's going to be really key to getting the greatest use out of this platform for teachers. Um, so I'm looking at doing one around that. Um, there's another one that it sits within, you know, Google Chrome. It's called AIPRM um, for any business owners or entrepreneurs out there. The, this is a great one because it gives you, 
you know, defined frameworks that you can use within chat GPT. Um, and they have some that are for lesson planning, um, but then on the you know business side, they have ones for like business plans. Um, they have ones for creating customer personas, like different things like that, which get really works cool. As in the prompts, the prompts yep, you put in? Yeah, okay. so like the prompts are already built in. You just like feed it a little bit of information and it just like generates like really cool stuff. Um, I mean, obviously the, the better the information that you give it, the better quality you're going to get out of it, you know, garbage in, garbage out type thing. <laughs> but um, so, so I think that's probably the next path. And then the other area that I'm interested in exploring a little bit more is with, um, with mid journey. Um, that's where you can create, you know, the AI artwork and um, really start digging into that some, because I, I think from a creative aspect that that's going to be be a neat one for teachers like you could create like coloring book pages and things like that really easily which um i think could be fun projects so mid-journey there's a gentleman here and he's in the group and in our academy bronson harrington shout out bronson uh he's doing stuff in mid-journey i'm pretty sure can you do all your own graphics and stuff in mid-journey yeah so the the big downfall with it right now is um it does not do text I don't know how long it'll be like that, but there there actually are some options out there for generating text through AI now as well, which kind of become a part of the overall graphic. Um, there's one I've been using, I can't think of the name of it right now. I'd, I'd be happy to share it with you after the fact um, in the comments. But um, yeah, Midjourney, I've actually been using it for logo design, which has been really nice. So I'll you know create kind of the overall artwork or graphic, and then I'll do the text in Canva and blend it all together that way. Um, and that, that's been a neat way to just get very original um, logo designs. Um, so that, that may be a course I might do, do at some point too, <laughs> so. Okay, let's go backwards now. Let's go back to, cause you and Noah, you guys got five kids. We so, do, yes. Living in the States. So let's talk about how did you even end up doing all this AI stuff? What's your journey here? <laughs> okay, sure. So, um, yeah, I got started on the AI stuff about six years ago. Um, and I was, I had like a week off from work and we were just hanging out at the house and I ended up taking like a class on Coursera on um, applied AI through IBM. And got to make like my own chatbots and got to create, um, you know, like this um, computer vision model that distinguished between different dog breeds, which was fascinating. And um, I don't know, I, I think it just really opened my eyes to like what's possible. And it's been really amazing because I mean, like this past year in particular, um, things have just been moving at such a rapid pace, you know, and I think it's exciting for folks, but I think people are also like, you know, where do I even start and how do I keep up with this? And so um, that that's definitely an area I'm, I'm really eager to help out with, um, you know, is, is helping people get that starting point and building that foundation to, you know, really make the most of it in their lives and in their businesses. And I think there's just so much potential there. So... And you're at the beginning of offering courses on this. So you're going to, you could be very easily rolling out more and more courses in the next three, four, five, six, seven months. Yeah, that, perhaps, that's definitely the plan. Yeah. So, and I, I think probably I, I, I'd love to keep doing things with teachers because I, I think there's such a, such a need there and it, it definitely makes a difference. Um, from a business standpoint, I, I think probably an area I'm going to start expanding into is more on the, you know, entrepreneurial side and helping like small businesses learn to leverage this technology because it's, it's so much more accessible right now to them than it has been in the past, you know, as, as individuals, as solopreneurs, you know, I mean, it, it's something that any of us can leverage um, at this point, which, which is exciting. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So where do you want to go next, Jessica? This is super fun. Um, <laughs> what else can you can you tease us with more? What's possible with this AI Chat GPT stuff? Yeah, definitely. Well, Chat GPT um, is currently rolling out to its plus users the ability to use voice imagery, 
So it, it's becoming more of what they call a multimodal generative AI tool. So instead of just using, you know, the text to text, it's now at a point where it's starting to be able to analyze images, for instance. So if you have an image that you put into the system, you ask it questions about that. Those are the types of things that it's starting to be able to do. Um, the other piece that is getting rolled out right now is around um, being able to have web connectivity, which we, we've we had some of that already with other tools like Google Bard, um, Bing AI, some, some of those, but um, now it's going to be integrated with ChatGPT, which the cool thing with that is I, I think it's been trained up through 2021 on data historically, but beyond that, there's like, there's a cutoff in what it knows um, and how it can respond. And this is really going to open the doors to have, you know, much more current information that it's basing its responses on, um, you know, re really be real time um, with, with what it generates. So, but at the same time, I mean, I think as we're using this stuff, we definitely need to be cautious as well. You know, I mean, they're, I haven't run into a lot of issues with like plagiarism or anything like that, but just as a best practice, what I always try and do is run it through, um, you know, they, they have plagiarism checkers. Like I, I like duplachecker.com is a really good one. And um, just to make sure that there's, there are no issues with it. And then the other key is fact checking because it has a tendency to, um, what do they call it? Hallucinate, um, which AI hallucinations, like that's where you get like, I don't know if you've seen the weird pictures where like somebody has like 10 fingers on one hand or like arms in weird places or things like that. So chat GPT does the same thing with text. So it has a tendency to make things up. Um, so being very um, aware of what it is that you're sharing with people if you use it for generating different ideas is, is really important. So just, just make sure you proofread it. <laughs> so, so it can but be it, it is like getting an, better and better all the time. So so it can be like an ornery seven-year-old. It can make stuff up sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. So. <laughs> okay. So, and is Noah working? He's a teacher full-time. And are you doing this then? Like, are you working as well as where are you at in your business online then? Yeah. So, um, so I started this thing, Penguin Connective is, um, is my company. I started it last year. Um, and, um, about four months ago, I finally made the transition from working full-time to being a full-time freelancer. So, um, you know, I was coming from a background, I have an MBA and a background in um, marketing leadership. So I'm still doing a lot, you know, within the freelancing side um, with, with marketing, which which is exciting because I, I love helping different businesses grow. Um, I love the creative side of it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so and I, I saw you're a musician, right? Uh, yeah, I like to sing. Okay, cool. Awesome. I, I started out as a singer songwriter. So um, it's, it, it's neat getting to expand into some of this stuff because I, I find like, just the ability to tap into that creativity and pull from like all the different projects and stuff is just really, really exciting. Um, so I, I don't know, it's, um, it's nice to kind of rekindle some of some of that stuff, which is neat. Um, Can we go there for a sec? Could you have chat GPT? analyze the best compositions of music and then write you music? So I don't know that ChatGPT has that capability yet. Um, there are platforms that let you create AI music though. Um, the way that they run, so I wish there were more options to get involved in the human side of kind of controlling the composition. Cause right, right now it basically, a lot of the ones that I've seen, you give it like the genre, you give it the key that you want, and then um, you ask it to, you know, render something, and then you can like re-render, you can also change the tempo. But outside of that, I haven't seen any yet that really let you get into, you know, controlling where the chorus is, um, where it, you know, kind of crescendos at certain areas, or what instrumentation you use within it. So, I think the more that we see 
opportunities to contribute in that way, the better, um, you know, because it, I think in terms of creating solid, you know, kind of foundations for your music that you could then, you know, add vocals and instrumentation over and that type of stuff. There's a lot of opportunity there. And that's, that's one area I'm really playing around with a lot right now is how can you take these possibilities with AI and use it in the creative process? Um, Cause that music, there, there's some musicians that are doing some really neat things out there with it right now. Um, but I, I think it's an area that we're going to see a lot of growth out of as well in terms of what the human interaction is with it. Um, so now one area that's been really cool, um, there's a tool out there called Kyber.ai, and um, you can create music videos with generative AI. So I had a song that I did a while back, and um, it created like this freaking amazing um, music video for it um, that it's like animated and it just I don't know it it just captured the essence of the song in a way that I had never really envisioned and it, it was exciting um, so I'd, I'd be happy to share that with y'all too but um, but that that one was really neat yeah please drop any links for people that are catch us after let them know what's possible it's it's gonna awesome. freak some people out uh, because they're really, w w how far can we go with this? I don't think anyone even, the rate at which it's expanding is beyond any probably comprehension currently. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> so, Okay, so how could people connect with you? I'll be tagging you in this after Jessica, your Penguin, your website. Well, please put all links. People are going to want to reach out. Just thinking... Um, yeah, I'll, well, after this interview, let's stay on the line here. I'll, I'll chat with you about a couple other things, but I'm just excited you're offering this and you're doing this. And I'm so happy for you that you've had this kind of accidental 1,800 <laughs> emails accidentally. <laughs> I'm so happy for you and Noah. It's great. Thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Seems like it can't happen to nicer people. So, okay, well, I guess if you've been watching Empower Network TV, listening to, uh, you listen. Listen, Jessica Spencer. Jessica Spencer is someone that would love to connect with you. If anything she said resonates with you or interests you, please reach out to her. Check out her links that are going to be in the comments section after. Say hello to her. Tell her what you appreciate. And um, this is the way of the future. So why fight it? Why not just leverage it for good? So Jessica, help the people out. Help them leverage it for good. Awesome. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Amos. <laughs>